skipper of this boat, and I'm sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here with uh, two of my friends in service team. Maybe you guys can introduce yourselves. I'm um, Paul Mark. I'm Josh. <laughs> Josh. So you were, uh, and this is your fourth time in Amsterdam or something? You know, oh, at least. Yeah. 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 The second time for you? Or yeah, I think this is my second time. In Amsterdam, in Amsterdam or Holland? In Amsterdam. In Amsterdam. Yeah, I actually, in 2011, Josh was, uh, he had a bit of a health issue oh, last minute. My back. And I came over and played guitar in his place. Oh, wow. So oh, I remember, I remember that. I played here, it yeah. was with While She Sleeps and Therefore Tomorrow. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah I've seen all your shows. Okay, there you go. Well, like 14 oh. times. Huge That's a long time. Or many times. Hey, it's not a long time. I've been in Europe too long. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, so uh, we have like this is like short tour in Europe. So is there a special connection with the cities you're playing or the countries you're playing? I mean, we played a lot in Germany. Germany is a big fan yeah. of our band, so we had to throw them those bones. But uh, yeah, you can definitely say we plan to come to Amsterdam because we love it here. We have a strong connection. Right. Um, we wish we could take this tour everywhere, there just wasn't quite enough time and we hope we get enough spots that some people could travel if they were, we're not playing their city. We do the yeah. best we can. We do the best we can. Yeah. The best you can, yeah. that's great. So when you're on the road, like, uh, how do you pass time? How do you keep yourself uh, inspired for such a long time when you're on, on the long tour? Well, Mostly we, boat. Yeah, we rent a boat wherever. <laughs> we rent a boat. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously. This is only maybe our second time uh, ever renting a boat. Yeah. But we do like. I think yeah. Part of it is definitely we try to do something fun in each city. Right. So, we, when are we going to have an opportunity <laughs> to do this again? I mean, like, we might as well do it now. Would you, would you never tour the canals or something? We're gonna. We're gonna go tonight. Yeah. This, yeah. But, yeah. No, uh, we've never. <laughs> I've never done the cruise like where they take yeah. you. I've oh. never done that. All right. I want to play by my own rules. I want to do it my way. Okay. So, so actually, you do fun <laughs> stuff all the time to keep yourself entertained and to keep inspired. Yeah. Yes. So are, they, are we different with crowds here? Are they different? In Europe? Or in Amsterdam? Or in the Netherlands specifically, whatever you do. I mean, everywhere you go is a little bit different. I feel like fans are polite. <laughs> we might have to take a short break. Yeah. I'm not sure how long it's going to take. <laughs> Keep filming. I think, uh, <laughs> I think definitely fans here are very polite. Yeah. Um, and very enthusiastic, you know, when they like something, they really like it. <laughs> they really like when it. they like something, they really like it. So yeah. it's, uh, it, it, when you win someone over, you feel good about it. You feel like you've made a, a friend or a fan for life. Wait, does it look good to drink while we're, while we're interviewing? How does for it look you. for you? Yeah, we don't care. It's pretty good. We it's pretty good. Care. <laughs> it's no secret that some of us in Silverstein enjoy beer. Yeah, exactly. Some of us don't, but we are the ones that do. So I think it's okay to have a, a nice little beer. Yeah. How do we how do we cheers here? Uh, Prost. Prost. Yeah. Prost. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, we're talking about the crowds. They're politer. Sometimes more. It it's really like it, it depends. There's different different little things everywhere. Like for for example, um, in Germany you get what we call, and I'm sure many bands call it, the German review, where after you finish playing they'll come talk to you. And rather than just saying, great show, they say, good show. Yeah. Last time, much better. <laughs> Why this time did you only play 15 songs instead uh, of I was so criticized. I was so criticizing some band I saw <laughs> last time. And they were so mad. <laughs> yeah, I, this just doesn't really happen in America ever. Yeah, there's that level of honesty. But, uh, but I mean, I like that, that just shows that they are paying close attention, you know? Right. They're not just saying, oh, it was the best show ever, when you know clearly it might not have been. Yeah. So if, I don't mind having a bit of honesty. I appreciate the honesty. They're never rude about it. So, you know, no one's rude. They're yeah. just saying, hey, I noticed you could have done a little better. I hope next time when I come to see you, you yeah. polish that up. <laughs> no one ever says I'm never coming back. Yeah. No, they're not mad. Because just, you're a good man. Right? They're just yeah. attentive. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice. right, so, so when you got, when you guys got a really diff, a difficult crowd, how do you play? I think we just do our thing and hope that they... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't have a plan for this year? No, not really. Yeah. We say a bunch of stupid yeah, stuff. I think just, yeah, the, <laughs> the less the crowd pays attention, the more ridiculous we get. 
<laughs> but I don't think well, that's, that's a way to attract attention. Right? Yeah, it could be. Yeah. I mean, we don't get we don't get too down about it. Uh, we got we we're got strong spirits. Yeah. No one can bring us down. Well, we're going to talk about the album now. Okay, good. Uh, I am alive and everything I touch. Out May 19th, right? Maybe uh, the 18th. 18th here, the maybe. 18th. Oh, it might be. Might be going. Guys might get it a day early. It's in that range, though. Or like late May. 16 hours early. Yeah. 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 So, it's pretty cool. We keep drifting away here. I'm trying yeah, to make sure we don't move <laughs> too much. Well, it's not really that bad. This is what happens when you do the interview on a boat. Yeah. But I think and it adds an element of excitement. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I'm just going to continue. I was yeah. actually wondering if you can see your face, their faces pretty well. Yeah. When we're, when we were talking. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we trust her. She's doing a great job. Yeah, maybe like that. Yeah. Just a bit shove a bit to me, towards me. No, no it's fine. I don't walk. Oh, that's better. Oh, here comes the sunlight. Oh, okay. The sun is nice. <laughs> it's going to do it just nice. <laughs> nice. All right. Um, so when I was uh, seeing one of your earlier interviews, I believe Shane was talking about just entering a studio, like like you're just gonna record and do whatever. Is that is that true? Is, that, is how you gonna? Is this how you plan doing a record? Just just going into the studio and see whatever happens. I don't know. That I, th ever I think we're yeah. I think <laughs> that I think we're usually pretty prepared. Yeah. The last two records we've been quite prepared. Lots of different demos. We, we rehearse a lot. Yeah. We jam the stuff out and get it dialed in at least musically. I guess often. The vocals are kind of the last layer to be added. Oh, yeah, he might be talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, he shows up and just, well, in this last case, we had a, we were recording songs every day. He would sit at a coffee shop down the road and just write lyrics all day. <laughs> Show up around five or six in the afternoon, start trying to sing some stuff. Yeah, so I guess we polish up the arrangements and the, right. the general idea of the song as a unit, get that all ready to go, and then... Shane comes in and comes and puts his stamp over top. And just ruins it. He, he just he frosts the cake. Right. Yeah. Was, was it true, by the way, that he uh, trained uh, with Melissa Cross? He did go to her for like one set of lessons, but I think she basically told him that she thought he was doing things mostly oh. right. Oh right. Um. And so yeah, he just kind of. But I kept I, his course. I did hear like a change in, in vocals. I think that's just a natural thing. Yeah. Kind of. yeah Over time, as you grow. Knowing Shane as a guy, I don't think. I think he just does things his way. You know? so, so you don't Definitely. think like it changed his way of songwriting? I don't think so. I don't think so. All right. By the way, we were talking about uh, the album. Can you like? I know. I know what um, what the concept is like and stuff. Can you tell like in a few sentences what it's about? Yeah, I've been uh, working on this. So. Got this. Uh, Here we go. I, I like to think of it as a concept in two layers. Um, so first, we deal with this sort of cyclical or circular nature of um, sort of our lives, um, which is why the first song and the last song are both in Toronto. We start in Toronto, we end up in Toronto. This happens to us so many times a year. Um, and so we deal with that, sort of like what's different, what's the same when you get back. The second deeper part of that, and the more specific part, is all the stops along the way. Each city holds a different set of memories unique to the person. So um, an anecdote I always tell in this case is St. Louis, Missouri in America will always be the city that I got broken up with over the phone on. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. I'll, it'll never be anything but that to me. And so it's when you start thinking about it as a group, everyone has stuff like that. Shane, you know, touring for 15 years, you're gonna have yeah. a lot of those stories. Right. And so Obviously. it deals with those things. So it's autobiographical as well. I think this yeah. one, I believe Shane says is the most yeah. autobiographical. Yeah. I feel in a way though, it, he has written about his experiences, but from a, a vague enough perspective that people can relate. Yeah. Because I'm sure people do have some similar experiences yeah. moving through life. And yeah. they can, they can, I can really take solace. I really, really get into that. Yeah. yeah. As a fan. Uh, so what's what's the appealing thing about concept albums? I think it's just nice to have a little more to dive into, you know? Like, it's fine and dandy to write some nice songs, and that's a lovely thing to do, but uh, to be able to take those songs and wrap it around something deeper uh, and have something to kind of draw inspiration from for the writing of the It's the novel the against the collection of short stories, yeah. you know? It's like you get... Yes, yeah, you have more time to get into a concept. And it evolves. Yeah. 
I think it can make it more of a unit too, yeah. rather than just like standalone songs. It's like these all fit together for a reason. So right. it's a, a collective album. Right. So you were talking about the different states and cities. Yeah. Which one do you like? Just... Which state and city? Uh, yeah, just yeah. when you're. you're um, it was actually Fen. Oh nice. yeah, it's it's a really tough question to answer. Um, Everywhere we go, we have favorite spots. Yeah, it's you know we have a there's probably a good, good top ten of cities we really like, and I think they're the ones people would guess: Philadelphia, New York, Chicago, Austin, Texas, Portland. I mean, keep it going. Yeah. But I think the more interesting ones are the, are the cities that people would never expect. Like there's a city called Boise, Idaho, right. that you know. If you live in America, you might think, why would anyone go there? But it's amazing. Lincoln, Nebraska, another amazing place that we tried our hardest to have days off at so we could <laughs> hang out because we just love it so much. Hey, it's like six hours in it. Oh, we were, see, we were going to rent one of those. Really? But then we thought, they're too slow. For the entire crew. We and, need the motor. Yeah. Well, I think we wanted to just go faster. Now, this boat, it doesn't go very fast, but. It does the job. It does the job. Yeah. It's nice to sit on. Anyway, uh, yeah, so lots of cities. We have fun everywhere we go. So. Uh, Amsterdam. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I thought you were talking about just America. Oh, no. oh in the world. I mean, it's a whole other thing. That's oh, difficult. A whole other thing. Amsterdam is up there, though, for sure. Yep. You drink beer. You, you drink, drink beer? It's the first place I've ever done an interview on a boat that I was the captain. Yes. <laughs> I said I was the captain. Fair enough. Okay, you're the captain. Yeah. He's the captain. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the art. I actually worked with Martin uh, at a snowboard shop. Uh, he was going to school for illustration, and I had started this band, but uh, we weren't touring as of yet. Uh, and then when we got a record deal and needed to put artwork to our album, I thought of him and contacted yeah. him, and he, he. So from then on, we've just gone to him and presented him with ideas of like. Sometimes just lyrics, sometimes just the album title, and let him roll with it with his imagination. He always comes up with something visually striking. Yeah, it's always animals, right? It's often Mostly. animals. He, he likes, especially for his personal art, to do a lot of animals, but I mean, we have some, some more landscape things going on yeah. uh, with some of them. And I, I think he just has a, a really neat style, and it's kind of become, I guess, a, a bit of a signature look for our records. Yeah. So that's actually awesome. also the question of why, why you keep coming back. It's just because it just feels like us, yeah. you know? We like the idea of a, someone who maybe collects all the records to lay them all out and they're all sort of matching, we think right. is a nice look. Well, I had the same thing, actually. Yeah. I own some records and put them together. Yeah. And they're all in the same style. And yeah. I think that's really cool. Yeah, we have consciously always done that. And then we Records that were not a. Uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get messed around here. <laughs> any of our releases that were not like a proper full-length album, uh, like short songs or uh, yeah, a decade different. or anything like that, we we stray for those so that it sets them apart. You can tell they're like a different type of project for us. Uh, but any of the full lengths, Martin, is our our guy. Got our look. And so then there's some random questions over here. I would definitely like to ask you guys. Sure. You guys are pretty much veterans in the scene, especially you, obviously, as old. a member of Silver That's nice way of saying I'm old. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> but is there a difference in how bands look up to you as a band or as a person? Maybe on, on Warp, that, that some bands are like, We only started noticing in the past several years that like you go on tour and some of the opening bands are like nervous to talk to yeah. you, or maybe they're not nervous, but they come right up and say, Hey, I listened to you growing up, and you are part of the reason I wanted to play in a band. And you always say, "Shut up!" I say, "Shut up!" Jerk. I backhand them across the face. And they don't talk to us. That deals with that problem. No, it's an incredible feeling, and I mean, some of these bands are really nice, yeah. like popular bands, and uh, it's incredible to hear. Yeah. You know, they look up to you. Yeah. Uh, you. Yeah. yeah. And maybe they will be. Huge rock stars and take us out on tour someday. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? Would be nice. Would be nice. So yeah. what's, that, what's that like for you? Because you're relatively new to the band. So yeah. How do you see that? Um, well, I've been around a while. I used to work for them, so I, I've been touring with Silverstein since. Guitar tech, right? Yep. Since 2008, and so I've seen. I mean, I've seen the same sort of switch that Josh is talking about just in the last couple of years. Definitely a lot more bands really respecting these guys. A lot of people don't seem to know that I wasn't in the band the whole 
time. So, <laughs> so I just take it in stride and say not? thanks. Um, I too started this band, and <laughs> yes, yes, I wrote all those songs you like. <laughs> It's a very clever way of yeah, you know, yeah, like dealing with it. They never see it coming. But uh, <laughs> no, it's I mean it, it's great. It's like I'm it's it's nice to be part of something and I don't think I could do it otherwise, but nice to be part of something that uh, has such an admirable almost legacy. Like the reputation of Silverstein is good. Like they're good people doing honest work and that's something I can get. Are we still good? I fixed it. So. You fixed it. Yeah. <laughs> wow, yes. All right, um, so let's talk about the tour real quick. What's it about? You're actually, um, what's it called? It's for Discovering the Waterfront. Yeah, we're doing the 10th anniversary of anniversary. Discovering the Waterfront. So that yeah. record has been out for a decade. Can you believe it? Me neither, but we're celebrating that. <laughs> time has flown by, and it's time to throw a party and say, yay, yeah. Discovering the Waterfront. I remember seeing you guys back in 05 in Rotterdam, I believe, which was my first ever gig. Cool. And it was so cool to see you guys. And I can't, Im I can't just imagine it was almost 10 years ago. That was that happened. venue called On the Waterfront? Just Waterfront. Waterfront? Discovering, yeah. Discovering the waterfront. Silverstein. Well, maybe we should have gone back there. The Waterfront. Oh, it's close now. Oh, well then. Close no now. good. Forget good. it. Yeah. Well, we still have the Waterfront. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about 2005. Uh, maybe you toured with a lot of bands back in 2005 as well. I think maybe we did. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, if you could tour with any inactive band that was active in 2005, if you could bring them on this tour perhaps, who would you bring? Why? Shoot. That's a good question. Who's a nice band from 2005? They, they all seem to be coming back. They are That's coming back. True, by the way. They broke up and are coming Maybe back. Maybe Under Oath? They... Under Oath would be lovely. Yeah. They were active yeah. then. Um, some fires coming back. Sure. Yeah, why not? Thursday. Never actually, we did some shows with them, but we never toured with them. They are very nice dudes, that would be fun. Was Refused the band then? No, I don't yeah. think so. No, no, no. But they're again now, so we can yeah. tour with them. <laughs> sure, why not? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, there was a lot of good bands, it's hard to pick. So, was Dead Poetic still a yeah, band in 2005? I, mean, so. I really like that record. We did a bunch of shows with them early on. It would be fun to have them on our tour. Spitalfield. Spitalfield. I saw you guys with Spitalfield in Rotterdam. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was that show. That was cool. It was a very fun. Time. I love Spitalfield. Yeah. Another question. I love 2005. Do you, do you miss MySpace? That was my next question. Every I, day. Yeah. We put Every a little. Day. We light a bunch of candles around a picture <laughs> of MySpace. Sometimes Tom. I wake up in the Tom. middle of the night like, <gasps> yeah. and then I'm like, oh, MySpace is still gone. Around 4 or 5 a.m. every night I leave Tom a bunch of voicemails yeah. like, dude, bring it back, please. Well, it it, it kind of came back. Yeah, it sort of. Yeah, Justin Timberlake yeah. bought it. Yeah. No, but really, do you, do you miss phone him. Like, a certain vibe that MySpace had? It was a lot of fun then. I don't think, I don't think we're any worse off now, you know? Like, Facebook is a nice tool to keep in touch with people. So it's not necessarily... I, I think I just enjoy the fact that the internet allows us to connect across the globe. Which has become like a better thing. Yeah. Yeah. We get to be in close contact with uh, friends and family and fans around the world. It makes sense. It's a beautiful thing when you're traveling all the time. That's true. Alright, there's a few questions left, so we're going to close really soon. Um, one thing I want to ask you guys. If do you have like tips on choosing the right label? Because you have moved from label to label a few times now. Someone that's passionate about what they do and what you do. Okay. Yeah. You can tell pretty much right away. How? Just what their interests yeah, are. Yeah, you got it. Just the first few things they're talking about are money. You probably don't want to be dealing with. Yeah, yeah. You want someone who's excited about what you're capable of and they want to grow with you. you. Yeah. Yeah. That's the right move. And I'd say like don't worry so much about a label these days because you really the internet. Yeah, crazy. you really you know, if no one's biting, don't force it. Just do your thing, right. it's all gonna work out. So what what's your stance on downloads then? Illegal downloads. Well I mean it's we're conflicted. Certainly. It's it's hard because yeah, you want people to hear your stuff, maybe they can't always afford to pay for it. There was a time when Metallica flipped out about it that people were still buying records mm -hmm. and they flipped out and it was like, shut up, because you're still going to sell like two million copies of your next record, probably not. But now it's a little different because like no one's buying records right. and everyone's downloading it. So I guess that's what Metallica was afraid of. I'm still buying records. 
People do for sure, but the the trends are way down. But people are buying online. I don't know. I think downloading. You know, I don't want to take art is a thing that people should have access to. If yep. you can't afford it, download it. But if you can afford it, I think your consumers should be responsible. Oh, so. Like when I I can afford to pay for records, so I do. But I know people who can't and they don't. And you know. I think this goes hand in hand though with what we were talking about with uh, us putting effort into the, our recordings where we have nice artwork and packaging and a concept so you want the whole record, you don't just want a couple hot tracks, you, you want to consume it all as this item, this unit, yeah. so maybe it's like we go that extra mile to make it desirable too. Maybe, maybe it's because I'm a designer, but I'm really attracted to that. We, we care a lot about that, put thought into the show here. Last question. It's, it's kind of a funny one. I sat down with my parents just a few days ago, and I was running blank on, on questions to ask you guys. And I was asking my mom, "Do you have? Would you have any questions for Silver She said, "You're the only band she knows of of who I listen, of what I listen to." Tell her we say hi. Yeah, hi, mom. I will. I'll tell her hi. Hi, mom. <laughs> okay. So her question was, and I want you to really think about this. Why won't you write? normal music. <laughs> I really want an honest answer from this because I think it's actually a pretty... Because you're not my mom. <laughs> you can't tell me what to do! But it's actually a quick, pretty interesting question. Well, to that I would say we... This is normal music We do yeah, write normal yeah. music. And I mean, if you're talking about songs where you're not being yelled at and screamed at, <laughs> those do exist on Silverstein right. Records, you know? True. And I think... We like to have dynamics, you know? We'll have some, some pretty songs that don't have yelling and screaming, but we'll have it right next to a song that does have a lot of it, so it, it creates this emotional journey, the peaks and valleys. I'd also like to add, not our fault. Not our fault. <laughs> we're, we're, you're, anyone who creates music is a product of their influences, and I know specifically for me, and I'm sure it's the same for Josh, we grew up in a town that had a hardcore scene, and so all the first live music I was exposed to was hardcore bands, and that's because it was all I saw, it was all I wanted to do, and I think that's kind of how that works. So to find out why we don't write normal songs, we'd probably have to go back and ask a band like 15 years ago <laughs> why they didn't write normal songs, and then you end up with a well, sort of a problem, right? uh, yeah, but you I end think, up with like a philosophical problem. Yeah. I think those bands, and even us initially, were not attempting to be heard on the radio or consumed that's by the masses, by the you know, it was just fun to get together and be aggressive and jump around and sweat and yell. But does it bother you? You're not on the radio. Yeah, we're pissed. Really so pissed. Mad. Right <laughs> we're no, mad. It's, it's I'm mad so right now. Thanks for bringing it up. Oh. I was having a good day. It, what it the hell? It doesn't matter. You know, people care about us and, and digest us and obtain our music however they can. Yeah. Uh, and we get to travel the world and perform it for people. And so it feels pretty nice. I think we reached a very comfortable Let's, level of attention. I feel like we can end this yeah, nicely and answer this question all at once by saying, we're sitting on a boat in Amsterdam <laughs> and we're going to play music. Like, yeah. really? Yeah. What do you that's, want? That's what screaming in music brings you guys. Yes. Yeah. All right, well, thank you guys. Pleasure. Thank you so it's much. Been, it's been awesome. It's been awesome. Anyway. Absolutely. We're going to take this thing for a spin right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, uh, that was, this was Silverstein. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you on the next interview at Rise for Five, done now. Thank Gross. you. Yes.